Good morning, ODLC Middle School students. This is Mr. Woolley. And remember, the information contained in this video is intended to be viewed only by the students in Mr. Woolley's classroom. By watching the video, you agree that you will not record or share the video with anyone who's not a student in Mr. Woolley's classroom. Now today, we're going to be working on Lesson 20, Investments, Performing Operations with Rational Numbers. So essentially, we're going to keep track of a transaction log or a register and keep track of someone's uh, account. So the first situation here is these two parents deposited $20,000 into an investment account for five years. They hoped the money made in their investment would amount to at least $30,000 to help pay for their daughter's tuition and expenses. So every six months they end up getting a statement sent to them about how their money's doing. So they're hoping to make that $20,000 grow into $30,000 over the course of the five years of investing their money. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of how much money they earned or lost over the course of um, that five years. And every six months they send a statement, so figured twice a year times five years, there's ten different periods we keep track of here. And all the information you'll see comes from these little statements. So this is like kind of like a copy of what they got sent in the mail. So for example, from January 1st, 2008 to June 30th, 2008, they had an investment gain, it's not in parentheses, if it was a loss, it would be in parentheses, of $700. So they made $700. In the second half of 2008, from July to December, they had another gain of $754.38. It was the first part of 2009, the first six months, they actually ended up losing. See how it's in parentheses? They ended up losing for uh, $49.88 and so on. Um, and then in 2009, in the second half, they actually withdrew some money, but there's a penalty involved, and we're not going to worry about that for right now. We'll show you in the register in just a minute. And they also lost some money here. So anyways, that's where all this information is coming from. So they made a withdrawal and took some money out of their account. Later on in 2011, you can see they added some extra money and they deposited some extra money. But overall, um, that just kind of keeps track of what's going on here. So now, what does this actually look like? All right. Now, in a transaction log, you have like the date when the transaction was uh, going on, the description of the transaction, that way you can always know what you're talking about, and you're either going to put the information into withdrawal, which means you'll subtract money out of the account, or a deposit. You can't have things in both on the same line. If you have two things going on, they need to be in separate lines. All right. So for example, the first thing we know is that they had a gain in their investment of $700, so their previous balance was $20,000. They add 700 to that, so 20,700. Now, every time they got one of those little tickets in the mail, those little uh, explanations, they had, had to pay an admin fee for someone to prepare that, which is $15. So you have to subtract $15 out of there. Notice how if it's in deposit, we add to it. And if we have something in the withdrawal, we'll take it away. So 20,700 minus $15 took us down to $20,685. So it's important to have that balance correct because every time you do something, you're going to either add to that balance, like here, or subtract from that balance, like you would here. So you're always going to keep this amount running through. All right? So um, just kind of, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I want you to just get the main idea here. After doing all of our accounting on uh, that first year, we went, we went from $20,000 to the beginning balance to $21,424.38. So not too bad. You made some money. Now, 2009 wasn't a good year. Obviously, they had losses, they had to pay the admin fee, you had withdrawals, you had a broker fee, loss and events admin fee. So, yeah, they went down to like 20,817.09. 2010 was a better year. They gained in their investments. Notice how they actually have something back in the deposit columns. So, they're adding back to the totals again, and it took them to 22,223.47. Um, 2011 was another great year for them. They had a deposit, so some extra money from somewhere, and they had a couple big gains again, so up to $25,496.55. And 2012 was a pretty good year as well. They had a deposit of $800, um, gain on their investments, gain on their investments, and up being $28,118.59. Now, this is kind of shown to you like in a yearly total, like how their stuff was going and everything. Um, but over the course of five years, essentially, they ended the balance at $28,118.59. They started at $20,000, so that means they uh, they gained over the course of those years $8,118.59. However, if you remember from the initial problem, that's not enough money to cover those college expenses. Their goal was to reach 30000 
but then I got 28, a little over 28,000, so they have a, a little bit of a shortage there, but still not, not too bad of a deal. They're still uh, got quite a bit of that $30,000 taken care of. So now, sometimes, as you guys do this someday, you'll have to keep track of your own uh, checking account and bank accounts and investment accounts someday. Um, normally, you'd start with a balance, and then you would like record in your information down. Like, oh, I made a payment, so I would subtract and then get down to here. Made a payment, subtract and get down to here. Um, I got a check. Someone wrote me a check, so that's adding money to your banking account. So you add two hundred dollars and so on. But in this problem, they actually what they did was they had all the transactions. They had the final balance. They had to go up to the beginning. So what you would have had to have done here, which can be kind of confusing for a lot of the kids, is you'd work backwards. Here's your ending balance. And someone just made a payment of that, you just had to write a payment for that, pay somebody. So you do the opposite of that, you would have to like add money back to your account and so on. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. We're not going to test you on that. But it's something that there's a problem that they want you to be aware of that sometimes if you work backwards, you have to work opposite through your information. So you can kind of see um, how I did the work there on that particular problem. Now, the problem set here, um, in the practice you guys do in a few minutes, um, they kind of stem from this scenario here. So you can kind of look over that a little bit if you'd like. But I got really most of the information set up for you already into Schoology. One thing you might want to take a look at is how I got this wrote out. I told you, I tell you how to set it all up when we get to problem five, but this might be a good start for you. So, all right, we'll go ahead and good luck practicing on your Schoology today. Thanks for watching.